early morning and um, even I have to admit it's feeling quite autumnal now so I had my summer holiday which was lovely and um, yeah extended the summer for an extra week and uh, but I've come home now and yeah it does feel like autumn partly because there are spiders everywhere you walk into the greenhouse and it's like coming through <laughs> all the web and stuff um, it's been this week really um, quite gloomy and rainy and really really windy um, luckily my corn was fine on the allotment um, so none of that blew over um, and I did harvest the baby corn which wasn't quite so baby after being away for a week probably should have done that before I went um, but the corn was fine and I'm going to harvest some more of that today I promised Liam fresh corn tonight so um, we'll go get that this evening so it is super super fresh that's the idea isn't it that you pull it off the plant and you immediately cook it um, but what did suffer from the wind was the sunflowers so you know those just majestic wonderful really big strong sunflower plants in my pumpkin patch well they are no more I went down there and they were on the floor so um, I cut them down at the base and laid them out um, and then cut off all the blooms um, that were good and uh, <laughs> put them in my little pull along trolley and uh, wheeled them up and down the street because um, I took some to my mum and then I came home I took some to the neighbour uh, I took some into work for my colleagues and then the rest are in my house I've got like vases of, of sunflowers everywhere which is gorgeous and lovely and it's bringing a little bit of summer into the house and to be honest you know although it definitely does feel autumnal I mean the squirrels are everywhere digging up little holes and um you remember those Christmas carrots that we sowed? No, gone, gone. All it is now is little holes and walnuts buried in there. There are no carrots to be seen whatsoever. So that's a shame. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll redo some. Dory. So yeah, although, um, oh, hello. What, let's go up here, come on. Oh. Someone was, uh, upset that she wasn't part of the video last week clearly um why is it autumnal dory you've got your fluffy coat on i've got my jumper on we're now in sweater weather sweater weather um yeah squirrels everywhere definitely a chill in the air i think it was 7.8 in the greenhouse last night so i've shut the um windows in the in the roof now um but so although all those things seem to indicate autumn, the Acer is still green. That's when I really know it's autumn, when the Acer gets on its, uh, its oranges. Um, the ginkgo is still green, uh, so no ginkgo tea just yet. And uh, it's a sunny morning today, at least. Um, and everything is still popping. You can see from the shots at the beginning there, there's so much still going on in the garden. And it all looks a bit wild. For sure um, and that was one of the things I felt when I got back from holiday and did my inspection and looked around the garden it was like whoa things look a bit messy and wild and crazy um, but with like all right, do I, um, but with like loads of blooms and I mean can you believe I still have sweet peas going um, and there are other sunflowers and roses are still blooming my David Austin rose the crazy in love red rose is still going um, and one of the wonderful things I saw when I came back from holiday, when I did my inspection of the garden, is I had a dahlia. <laughs> yes, I finally got a dahlia. So the um, tartan dahlia, which had the buds on when I left, um, had finally bloomed. Now, I did capture it and it's all its glory, but um, it very soon got uh, chewed up by whatever slugs snails um and i've had a couple more come out um since and again yeah they must be just so super tasty to the snails i think um but there's more buds there's still still some more to come i'm still waiting on the cafe au lait though <laughs> let's, let's see if it can can throw out a bloom before before the first frost and oh starting to talk about first frosts um no no we're not there yet um we're not there yet because 
tomatoes we've still got loads of tomatoes and essentially i think this is going to be another tomato video because i've got quite a few things to say about tomatoes this week um but the first thing i want to do is actually um do a proper harvest of these tomatoes because so far i've just kind of been coming out and picking the ones that are really ripe um and using them um i haven't done sort of a sweep harvest and i certainly haven't compared all the varieties yet and, and seen which are the tastiest and which are the ones i want to definitely grow again next year um so that's my plan for this morning is to do a quick tomato harvest then to work then i'm going to come back with you to the allotment and we're going to get some corn um, and then tomorrow is apple day which is another you know signal of of autumn where we got to our community orchard apple day uh is also the autumn equinox and it's also my birthday this weekend so these are all you know the indicators for me that um, we are we are easing to autumn now and saying goodbye to the summer oh yes um speaking of tomatoes um, here is the success story that we're about to get to uh, against all odds because you know these were uh, massively neglected and abused poor tomatoes um, but the ones at the very back of the garden uh, while I was away I um, clearly did not listen to a device that you all gave and uh, just swanned off to holiday and left them and when I came back the, the blight had properly properly taken hold um, so I did have to whip those out and that left me with a huge bowl of green tomatoes um, some of which I used in a green tomato curry good way of using up your green tomatoes um, and others I've, I've frozen um, for future curries I guess um, I could have made a chutney I just wasn't I hadn't had time this week to think about chutneys so uh, a quick green tomato curry was where they went um, all that blighted material obviously went into the council bin rather than the compost um, and that wardrobe now well there's a little bit of basil in there but otherwise it's cleared and it is time to say goodbye to that wardrobe bed, I think, because it's a bit falling apart. So there's a lot of compost in there, which I can use for mulching, but obviously I don't want to use it anywhere that I might be growing tomatoes or potatoes. And that was the other thing. I think I noticed a few little signs of blight on the Christmas potatoes. I'm really hoping it's just natural sort of poorly leaves, but um, I'm keeping a close eye on those. That'll be a real shame because they have grown like Billio. They're really good plants. Um, yeah, I really hope they don't succumb to late blight. Um, but that's the negative. Let's get to the positive and have a look at some of these tomatoes. So when I came home from holiday, this was the one that I was most excited about. And, I, and even though it was ready, like, when I got back, I've left it on another five or six days, whatever it's been. Um, and it's quite, it's getting quite soft now, but I wanted to, wanted to share it with you because, oh my goodness. And I think probably these are ready now as well. Um, so those are the beefsteak tomato seed that I saved from one of my sister's plants last year. So I don't know what the variety is. I'm just calling it Josie's beefsteak. <laughs> So we're going to harvest those. Um, the other one that I was super happy about is the oh, blue fire. That's the blue fire. Um, look at those. How beautiful. I have tried one and it tasted good. Okay. So now we're going to pick some of those ones. Um, but you remember that they had the black shoulders but green for so long. But yeah, they just kind of tip to red really quickly um what else have we got we've got plenty of chocolate cherry and these are the ones that i've been eating the most of um and yeah that's nice and soft so we'll take some of those we've got the jen's tangerine which is a lovely big yellow cherry it almost looks like a medium-sized tomato but it's supposed to be a cherry the sun gold still coming there we go. Um, this poor plant is not looking very good, um, but there's still two tomatoes on it. Um, actually, does that look blighty? It does look blighty, doesn't it? I know the one behind looks a bit black, but that's fine because that's the blue fire. You see, those ones have still got the green bottoms. They haven't gone red yet. Uh, I think I'm going to take this one out now. 
Um, what else have we got? Oh, I know, the green zebra, which you really have to give it a squeeze to know when it's ready because, of course, it's green. I think that's close. Hmm, I might leave it a little bit longer. And the other one um, that I've got in here is St. Pierre, which is this one, which is kind of just a standard, bog standard, medium-sized red tomato. And lastly, this one, which is the, uh, what was it called? Indigo pear drop, indigo pear drop. So this is supposed to have blue shoulders, um, but the blue shoulders are not appearing, um, but they are quite soft and ready. So we've got another one here. But what I didn't realize when I planted these um, was that they really are a dwarf tomato. Well, I mean, compared to, <laughs> these ones this is about as high as it got but that's good to know for next year because um i'll probably plant those in the mini greenhouse or should we go look at the mini greenhouse so this is definitely wild um and what's happened here is the stems have broken over the bars which i tried to blame mum for <laughs> because the hose comes down from here and while I was away she used the hose to do the tomatoes in the greenhouse and these ones um, but yeah I think maybe it got caught and uh, took some of these down it's mostly still um, green tomatoes on here but there is the blight you can see there and of course this is right behind the greenhouse so I'm gonna to have to make a decision about these ones as well and oh hello I've just been speaking about spiders if you don't like spiders well sorry about that but also you might not want to hear that while I was on holiday um, a spider crawled across my face while I was asleep right across my eyelid and um, <laughs> so I woke up felt it grabbed it and threw it at Leaf. and he was like did you just throw a spider at me um, right, uh, oh, the other thing I wanted to say about these tomatoes in the greenhouse was that you remember I um, decided to put some dwarf beans in between them. Yeah, then they're, they're not so dwarf. <laughs> they're growing right up the, um, the tomato stems. So yeah, guess I got my packets mixed up there. I could have sworn I only put the dwarf ones in. Oh well, um, no beans so far we'll see if we get any um but the basil is just amazing look how tall it is this is the cinnamon basil um but yeah I, and the cinnamon basil is gorgeous stuff but the regular basil is also huge and looking so healthy really chuffed with that and we even have some peppers in here as well oh, i think these ones are supposed to go red so i'll leave them on a little bit longer but they do tend to get eaten um he's not growing very much he's very shiny still got a green bottom though um got a couple over here that one oh you see this is what i mean this is what happens with the peppers and the aubergines they get these little holes right at the top just humor slugs um but yeah there was a where's that one a little white one. Oh no i don't know if that's supposed to be one of the white ones it doesn't look too healthy um and we've still got a few cucumbers coming as well and the bucket over here that has the sweet potatoes in that you know it's created a lot of foliage so it'll be interesting to see um if there are any sweet potatoes actually in there right um stop getting distracted what i'm going to do is pick some tomorrow.
Welcome to the plot. I've um, tried to get out between bouts of rain, so um, that sunshine this morning was a little bit misleading and uh, we've had plenty of rain this afternoon. Um, as you'll see, I kind of gave up on my washing in the end. Um, it's now in the dryer. But um, So I've come down to the plot and we'll have a quick look around, uh, mostly show you the carnage that is the squash bed after the sunflowers came down. Um, and we're going to harvest some sweet corn. And actually sunflowers weren't the only casualties. Quite a few cosmos have broken. Um, so a few, this one's flopped over. A few are already in the compost heap, but I probably need to go about and um, and uh, look at those. Um, but there's the celeriac doing okay. Could be celeriac, could be celery. Here's some blighty tomatoes. Um, kale's doing great with those look at the size of that now <laughs> what even is it anything in the middle to give us a clue nope nothing um, this one has some little bits on I think these are like mini Romanescos now um, but yeah all of these potatoes this is all still potatoes along here and uh, I haven't harvested any of those yet. In fact, I've still got second earlies to harvest. There's the sweet corn still standing. And um, as you'll see, the cobs have kind of lost their silks. In fact, they've fallen off. So they must be pretty ready, I would say. There's a tromboncino. And of all the squash that I've grown, Absolutely, the tromboncino is the success. Oh, look at that one. <laughs> Somebody's had that. Was it you? That's a lot for one little slug. Well, not quite that little. That one's looking okay though. Don't eat that one. Another one of those over there. But now that the foliage is dying back, I can start to see what we've got. So for instance, this butternut squash was a surprise. I didn't think any of the butternut, butternut squash had survived. You can see all the tree spinach is going to seed now. These candy roaster are pretty prolific. Some over here, um, there was some another one back there, the Uchikuri ones, another couple over here. So they've done well. Um, oh got some courgettes there to yeah. harvest. Yes, Dory. Oh, do you like the Turks Turbany ones, the fungo? I think this one's catching up with the other one now in terms of size. We were here last night and my nephew was like, can I have one of those? Wants it for his Halloween display. But yeah, this is where the sunflowers have gone. So we've still got this one here, so that's not so bad. Um, but all, all those, that huge one went. This one's looking a bit bedraggled, but I'm just leaving it there for the birds. Oh, Dory, that water is very dirty. I wouldn't drink that water. Should we get you some fresh? Got grass clippings from the church still here. I haven't thrown them about yet. There you go, baby. Better. Yeah, that's better. And uh, Big Max is still in there. I really need to cut some of this back, actually, so the light can get to him, because these cosmos have fallen over onto him. But he's still in there, still doing well. And there's a, um... oh, there's two there, in fact. They are the baked potato squash. There's another one. Oh, so they're doing pretty well. And there's one. That, that plant fell over. Um, oh, and there's a another butternut in there. There's still quite a bit of ripening to go, but we have still got nearly, I don't know, at least three or four weeks until the possibility of a first frost. Uh, this courgette's not looking so great anymore. What about this one? Oh, hello. Oh, you're a funny funny shaped one. You're nice and straight there. These tomatoes, you can see, have uh, very much succumbed 
to the blight and I'm not sure I need any more green tomatoes. Oh, there's a, there's a red one in there. Let's see if it's any good. Yeah. That's okay. Another one nearly ready there. The lettuce in this bed is doing brilliantly. There are no slugs eating it at all and the leek's looking fine. I'm really chuffed with that. This though is a slightly sadder story. So my wonderful perennial kale, which I know I keep going on and on about. Oh, sorry, I'm getting stuck in the bean structure here. Um, it lost a, a really big branch off one side. But you know what, it's not such a bad thing really because you can hardly tell. Um, and plus, I got to give a lot of my colleagues, two of my colleagues, not a lot, two of my colleagues, um, a load of kale. So that was nice. And the bean structure, amazingly, both of them in fact, this one and this one that didn't in the end get very much use, have both stayed standing, which I'm quite surprised about. But um, yeah, still, still beans on here, but um, kind of leaving them now uh, to go to seed and uh, then they'll be for next year's plants. We did kind of get a cauliflower, but it doesn't look too appetizing, does it? How about in these other ones? Nothing in there. Nothing in there. This was the um, caterpillar, the cabbage white uh, plants, but I've been checking on them and um, they haven't recurred. So I must have got them all and the plants themselves are looking really good. So it's similar to the garden really. Mm -hmm. And that it's all a bit wild and um, unkept, but there's actually a lot of produce in there. So, my feeling is that there's a lot of dying back to happen soon. Right, winter is coming. I don't necessarily want to break my back doing loads of clearing now when a lot of it will just clear itself or at least reduce itself down and make the clearing easier. So that's kind of where my mind's at at the moment, especially because we had freshers week this week and then uh, term is starting next week. Things are about to get busy. Right, although the sun has come back out, I'm not going to count my chickens and I'm going to harvest some corn um, before it starts raining again. So let's go have a look. Cobs of corn. I've done the uh, finger test. So it's corn, and you stick your fingernail in, and if it comes out milky, which that is, it's ready. Um, so that one I think is the best. Um, these are a bit missing the kernels at the tops, but there's plenty underneath. And this one was full of wood lice but they only seem to be in the outer layers. Actually, this is not a great one. So you can see here, there's not much on that side, but actually that side is fine. So, although there's only two of us for dinner tonight, I've taken three. And, uh, right, um, the trick then is to get these cooked as soon as possible and eaten. But one more thing to show you before we go then, and this is on Mark's plot. Um, he's grown some uh, Big Macs pumpkins as well. 
What's she barking at? <laughs> um, but they look totally different to mine. So I'm not sure if he's got his variety right, but check this out. Look at that one. The size of it. There's a little one next to it for comparison. What's up with you? You want to go walkies? Okay, we'll go walkies first though. Yay, massive Comanchino. <laughs> I love it. I had so many of these. Look at this one. <laughs> No, down here. They're everywhere. They're everywhere, Dory. Oh, good girl. Good girl. Right. Okay. Yes, we'll go for a walk. Come on then. Good morning, thank you for joining me um, this morning, which is a rather dank and cold and windy morning. Uh, it's pretty early because we are off to the Malvern Autumn Show today. We, I, I didn't mention it before because I wasn't quite sure who we were going to do it or not because, yeah, the weather didn't look great. Um, but we decided to go for it because it's my birthday and it'll be fun and, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Um, so that's why I'm up early. But I wanted to uh, jump on before we go um, to talk tomatoes again. Um, so last night, um, this is this is the kind of a wild stuff you do when you're in your early forties. Um, we did tomato taste testing as part of my birthday. So um, we taste tested all the greenhouse tomatoes, and um, this was our verdict. Oh, not got the thing with me. Hang on got my piece of paper um now to be honest we were slightly underwhelmed by the majority um and it's making me think about what i want to invest in in terms of tomatoes next year um but for just a quick quick overview the uh, outstanding winner was the sun gold uh, i think we just all like sweet things um so sun gold came out on top uh the runner-up was the latter which is a real seeds bush tomato and is the one that uh, is not in here actually it's um, growing in the raised beds um, and then behind that was the beefsteak one my sister's saved seed from last year um, at the very bottom was the St Pierre which is you know it is your bog standard just red medium tomato so perhaps that's um, understandable um, but only just above that was the tigerella and the blue fire so the blue fire i mean it looks fantastic but uh chocolate cherry was mid-range um but i think that that's still kind of my favorite i mean even though i guess the sun gold tastes better i was a lot more generous in my scores than anyone else i think because they're my tomatoes anyway it's making me think about tomatoes for next year and i've already been thinking about tomatoes for next year and that's what i want to share with you so i did a little order it was more than a little order. Um, there are some great places online to get uh, heritage 
uh, tomato seed and the kind of trendy varieties that you see a lot of on Instagram. Uh, tomato Revolution or something is, is one of them um, and now Radford is another um, but in the end I decided to go with a company called Seed Envy. Um, again, it's one I found on Instagram. Um, she's a woman who's growing tomatoes in her garden and saving the seed and selling it online and um, yeah I'm pretty pleased because um, although her prices were pretty comparable with those ones as well because these heritage tomato seeds aren't that cheap. Um, what I liked about hers was she actually had all the varieties that I wanted rather than having to get some from here, some from there. Okay, so that's why I decided to go with her and um, also she threw in um, an extra variety which is called Old German Tomato. Um, but the ones that I actually ordered were Barry's Crazy Cherry and you'll see I've gone for all the trendy ones. Um, Black Strawberry, Alice's Dream, because after Jessie's uh, tomato testing, uh, Plot 37, couldn't not get Alice's Dream. Uh, Black Beauty, Rebel Starfighter Prime, uh, Brad's Atomic Grape, and um, this one is not one of the trendy ones, um, but I really like the sound of, it was Blueberries Tomato. Okay, so those are the ones I invested in, but I have to give a massive shout out to Ali and Trisha at uh, The Right Pair because um, they have sent me such a generous and exciting collection of seeds. I am so, so chuffed with them. Um, I had them sent to um, my pigeonhole at work and um, I went in last week. It was first day on campus, first day meeting new students. It was back to back meetings, full on. And um, I got to sneak off to my pigeonhole at one point and find these seeds. And it was just, it brightened my day so much. So thank you guys. Um, this is what they sent. Um, black Trifelli, Crushed Heart, Crushed Heart, Indigo Apple, uh, Honeycomb, which was one of the ones I had on my list to buy um, from King Seeds when I do my King Seeds order. Um, Sun Gold, I will try it. I'm going to compare Sun Gold to the Honeycomb because apparently Honeycomb um, wins out against some gold I've heard so we'll see we'll, we'll test it next year and then lastly the one I was really excited about was Garnet it was another one that I had on my list to buy and I've heard good things about so thank you Ali and Trisha thank you so much and as well as a thank you I have to say a huge congratulations to them because they got engaged and um, if you haven't been over to the right pair plot in a while or you don't know Ali and Trish go and have a look because um, <laughs> Ali had Trisha made a song and it is the sweetest video but also hilarious <laughs> so um, I'll, I'll link it below um, but yeah congratulations to you two and thank you ever so much so exciting things for next year in terms of tomatoes and I think doing that taste testing last night it really did make me think you know I think more than anything that I grow, the tomatoes get the attention. And I say this being someone who massively abused and neglected their tomatoes early in their lives. And I wonder if that has something to do with the taste not being as great. Because my cousin grew some of the same varieties and she's adamant that hers tastes better than mine. Um, and she did care for hers a little better than I'd cared for mine. Um, I have to say, I did look once they were in the ground in the greenhouse, I have taken care of them. Um, but yeah, it was just those early days. And those early days are important though, aren't they? They are. Anyway, I've got to get Dory dropped off. She's spending the day with my sister and Mark. So you might be down the plot, Dory. Um, and yeah, I need to get my packed lunch together and um, decide what I'm going to wear for pouring rain, then bright 19 degrees, and then 40 miles per hour winds. I'm not sure how the marquees are going to hold up to that, so it should be interesting. Um, I shall outro with the footage. Um, in the meantime, thank you for joining me on my birthday weekend and all my tomato talk, and I will catch you next week. Thank you for watching. Take care.